history to solve all the problems is unrealistic. The expectation that a youth ministry will suddenly create jobs and uh, improve their lot overnight is unrealistic. You can't have it. So, the, so uh, what you should actually be looking at is that how can we create an environment, an environment that allows the youth to express their natural ability to be ingenious? that allows them to go out within an environment and just do what they naturally can do. Pour out their energy in whichever sector. Self-employment, but go out. Because the environment allows you to be creative, allows you to go out and do that. It's the environment, it's the policies, and that's what I think that we need to begin to shift out of. The expectation that there is this national pie that everybody can come, uh, you win here, this 100,000, 10,000, go and start off. I think that's, a, that's where we're missing it. It's more about what can we do to set up policies that encourage ingenuity, that encourage people to get up, think, put a plan and begin to run with it and that it will turn ideas into money. And that's where we need to start thinking. Policies, environment, how can we encourage our youth to pour? Because, man, do you have ideas? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> loads and loads. Loads, <laughs> loads of ideas. I'm going to put you a bit on the spot now. and want we'll to talk about this amnesty issue now that comes up. You are from the Niger Delta, and it's something that's sort of worked on a short or medium term with resolving the crisis there. And this whole thing blew up in the north now. And amnesty is being talked about, even if not necessarily officially. When that sort of a system is put up where young people see that, okay, you can be rewarded for crime, which is what I think it is, do you think that is the way forward? Because, I mean, if, if I can take up arms today and I know that in two years I'll be called to a table and sit with Mr. President and get millions of dollars for whatever I've done, why then should I bother with doing anything else? And it's a very good question. And I'm sure it's a question that has, uh, that has kept a lot of people awake at night in many countries. So amnesty in itself, amnesty in itself is not wrong. Okay? Uh, people have done terrible things the world over, whether it's Burundi, Rwanda, South Africa, all over, Afghanistan, everywhere. You would always find that there are people who have done terrible, inhumane things uh, to each other. Now, the punishment that follows across board every single time that you want to do it, you have to weigh that against the reality of bringing in people and just correcting and healing a nation. So. Amnesty in itself is meant to heal. Amnesty in itself is meant to bring together such that you forgive. Amnesty is not meant to reward. Okay, it's meant to be a platform. It looks like it is now. Because again, it's the, not just is it a perception, it's the lifestyle that is being lived by those who have benefited from amnesty. And it shouldn't be. Now, along with amnesty, there is also meant to be a reorientation of the people, an acceptance that what we did, for whatever reason, is not right. But this is how we're now going to correct it. So there's a lot more than just handing out cash to say that, okay, amnesty, you're forgiven, and here, this is cash. That should not be. It shouldn't be the case. Yeah, reintegrating people back into society. There's a forgiveness that must happen. There's a reconciliation that must happen. All of that is necessary. Now, if you give this, if you give the impression to do blog on the street that you know what, get up, pick up arms, go out, create one. Once you solve Boko Haram and amnesty follows and cash follows and all of that, then maybe OPC will start in, 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 in the West or something, you know. So we have to be very careful about it. We really have to be. So I, don't, I support amnesty in itself as a, as a method for which you can reconcile people. I don't support giving cash as a method to resolve amnesty. So what do you think, I know this is not necessarily your purview or anything, but what do you think would be like a short, because I think everybody's opinions or ideas are needed as it is now because we're all in this together. What is the short to medium term way to resolve what's going on in the North now? They've tried force, they've tried everything and it seems like nothing is happening. And of course, most of the people who are carrying this are young people. Good. And so you have to go back to the, you have to go back to the very basic truth and the root cause of half, your, half, half the problem. And the root cause comes back to what you talked about, poverty education, poverty education. So we have to understand that there is a pervasive issue of poverty. And a poor person will, is susceptible to being recruited for anything because he wants money to eat. I go to the north, I set up a farm in the north, right, just so that we can take people off the street and feed them. 
just have them work. And so we need to take, and we need to take very seriously the issue of poverty and education. Very, very seriously. So that's where you need to get to. And if we can resolve that, I think you've taken half the children off the street. Then the rest is the mental orientation. Well, thank you very much. Um, you've been very, very helpful. Uh, final one. If you were appointed minister of it today, would you accept? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't it's know. coming from me. It's coming from me. <laughs> Not that I have any power to appoint. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think, I think the, the, the straightforward answer... Because your name was on the list once. I know. Yes, it and was. Yeah, it we was. appeared and before we blinked, it was it out was of gone. there. I so don't know no, what happened then. So I think, I think the, the straightforward answer to that is that I would, I would never run away from an opportunity to serve the nation. But let's leave it at that. Great. Thank you very much, Tonyeko, for joining us. It's <laughs> been welcome. great having you here. When we come back, we have a lot more for you right here on Robbing Minds. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to vConnect.com. Information whenever, wherever. vConnect is the largest local search engine in Nigeria, with more than 700,000 businesses listed and over 1 million active users. And now, vConnect is available on the go with our new fantastic app for Android and BlackBerry smartphones. The quick search function allows you to search your local area for any product, service or business. Detailed information is available about each business, reviews, photos, videos, directions, contact details and lots more. Quickly create a list of your favorites from any category of your choice. Can't find the business you're looking for? Select Get Supplier and fill out a few details. In no time at all, we'll get back to you with the information you're looking for. Download the vConnect.com app from the Play Store and BlackBerry App World today. Every day as they happen, opinions of us. I lost money in Africa. Sadusi said he couldn't care about the shareholder. Every Is that possible? For and against, they have to be heard. The government of this dispensation has made a very strong commitment. Yet, yeah, bombs keeps going on. Every day, people are dying. And we are talking grammar. Unfeatured. You are the worst advertisement of the product you are trying to pick. Uninhibited. People are contravening and contradicting traffic rules. And issues are laid bare. This is what is called in psychology. Narcissism is worse than megalomania. And the weight decided by you. Face off. Wednesdays 8 to 9 p.m. Only on Channels Television. Say, hey, hey. Welcome back. Now, I mentioned the Anambra elections earlier, and I told you we we're going to come back to it a little later. I have here with me um, Kabulu Bari Benakole. Correct. I love those Niger Delta names. They just roll around your tongue. They're He's real. a business development director for Techie District. And um, you, want, you want to talk about um, some of the technological things you're doing to help Anambra in 2013 in November. Yeah. What, okay. are, what are some of these things you're developing? Okay, I am, um, you know, EIE, enough yes. is enough, enough is, is about, about Nigeria, yes. good governance. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not um, purely a political organization or for any political party. It's mainly about educating the people on technological advances to be sure to use them right to that. Let's take, for example, the internet. Today, it is ubiquitous. It is a means of awareness. I mean, you can get all the information you need. So EIE thought of educating the people to make sure that they know how to use these devices to be sure that they know what is going on, nothing is hidden, they know how to participate fully. And that's where Tech District comes in because we are about educating the people on technological advances to make sure that we are on the same level or equal footing with advanced countries like our role model is usually the United States. So that's where Tech District um, partnering with AIE makes it um, an easier ride for the people of Anambra in the forthcoming. How easy is this for a regular guy on the streets to understand and use? And what, what are they, do I have to have like a special kind of phone to have no, these sort of things? No. A regular guy on the street uses a Nokia phone. Okay. They can get WhatsApp on a Nokia phone. They can get information. 
In fact, they're able to connect their WhatsApp to their to Facebook.